This is Lock Airy in Fraser, Pennsylvania. I've been driving by this house for almost 20 years and always wondered what does it look like inside because I certainly love the outside. Uh, I just it was one of my favorite houses in the area where I live. And then finally I got my chance. Uh, I, I, the house was for sale and I just called the agent on the phone listed on the sign and this is uh, the end result. The black and white photos, including this one that you'll see part of this as part of this video, were taken during a 1958 Historic American Building survey. And here's what Lock Area looks like today. Originally called Glen Lock, later renamed to Lock Area, and then today more commonly known as Lockwood Mansion or Lockwood Estate, was originally built by Philadelphia businessman William E. Lockwood. It was designed by a famed architect at the time. Addison Hutton, and the landscaping was designed by uh, locally famous landscape designer Charles Miller. Lock Airy was one of the largest estates in all of Pennsylvania at the time. It was 684 acres, various tracts that Lockwood had purchased up in and around uh, the initial tract. The design is Italianate and the Victorian Gothic detailing. It is known that around uh, the period of 1877, this house had a telephone as well as a complete security system. Every door and window in the house was wired to a burglar alarm. The reason William Lockwood was so concerned about security is that according to an 1877 newspaper, as many as a dozen tramps were collected by officials off of the Glenlock property. The stone that makes up Lock Airy was quarried directly on the property. It's made of Pennsylvania blue marble and blue limestone. Even though Lock Airy had between 12 and 14 springs at the time directly on the property, William Lockwood decided to transport softer water from approximately 2,600 feet away through 17,000 feet of 2 to 3 inch piping. This uh, water supplied the man-made pond that you see behind the house as well as the fountain on the side of the house. So this is the rear of the house facing what today is the Home Depot parking lot. The windows, rounded windows that you see there are actually stained glass windows which you'll see in the interior video of the home later on. One of the most amazing parts of this house that I couldn't adequately capture with the cameras is the underground storage facilities. And they are located beneath that cupola vent that you see on top of the ground. The large storage facility right under that vent is probably 20, 20 feet square. It's amazingly large. And so now it's time to go inside Lock Airy. The one thing that I was surprised about is the unassuming front door. For a house of this grandeur, I would have expected something a little more grand. But once you step in, well, it looked great in 1958, complete with a uh, hanging Tiffany chandelier. And here's what Lock Airy looks like today when I took my internal house tour. You'll see a lot of very decorative plaster work. Unfortunately, that has sustained a lot of damage, like this bird has lost a wing. There's a close-up photograph, and here's what it looked like in 1958. He still had his wing. And there's an identical bird on the opposite side. Most of the light fixtures on the first floor have that plaster work surround. And here's a couple of really decorative brackets, which you can see have been painted over in white but there's some green coming through the, the paint color. What's really impressive is the cornice molding that you'll see in many of the rooms of the first floor. A lot of this has sustained some terrible damage. Current owners have received a $100,000 offer to remove the staircase out of the house. Hopefully they won't take them up on it. This seems to be the remnants of a 
new old post, light or some sort of decoration. This room is the rightmost room in the house and it would have looked along the side yard where the fountain was located. There's some simpler cornice molding in this room, not quite as decorative, it's not perforated. This is the fireplace of the room. All the fireplaces in the house are missing that central decorative cabochon. A lot of the rooms have these hidden blinds that recede back into a pocket. This room received some of the most egregious damage to the plaster work in the cornice molding, and in this case, someone has inserted some egg cartons to fill in the blanks and painted it to match. The stairs wind up to the second floor landing where you'll see the stained glass windows that can be seen from the rear of the house. While you have cranberry glass on the second floor, it's all clear on the third. There's a 900 gallon water tank that's inside the tower. This is the part I was looking forward to the most. What was it up there that was in that tower? And the answer is, not much. I opted to end the video tour here, up in the top of the tower. The rest of the bedrooms and the other rooms in the house weren't all that exciting, so I did not retain that video. The last view you'll see uh, before the end here is the spiral staircase going down. And then if you move a little over to the other side of the tower, you're going to see the real travesty of this property, which is Home Depot right next door. Hope you enjoyed the tour, and please share it with your friends.